Hello my dear friends, you're in the military of summary channel and this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 12 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. First we're going to talk about South Donetsk direction. Today the Ukrainian sources published the video of how they were FPV droning the Russians already on the territory of Konstantinovka. More precisely in the southeastern part of the village in this video we can see the Russian soldier running along the buildings and the streets of Konstantinovka and how the Ukrainian drones were FPV droning the Russian forces. This video confirms that the Russians did manage to enter the southeastern part and currently the Russians are trying to develop and to expand their foothold further in the central in direction of the central part of Konstantinovka. There are very heavy clashes and you think we know for sure that Ukrainians stop publishing any updates as well as the Russians, so which means that currently nobody has the initiative and currently this is the stage of battle for Konstantinovka, meaning the stage of battle for the initiative. Now let's move further and let's continue with Krasnogorovka. As you can see, we have some changes on the ground. The first change is that this one, this is very important. Today the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation published the video of how the Russians were bombing and attacking the southwestern part of Konstantinovka. So this part, if you remember the previous configuration of the map this territory used to be in the gray zone so in contested area so there was a gray cloud but now we have geolocation that the russians were bombing this territory which complete confirms complete control by the ukrainians so that means that Ukrainians control some buildings along Lermontova Street, along Zezdorozhny Street, and the most important, the Ukrainians control these farms. And uh, the Russian strikes means, uh, on the other hand, that the Russians began artillery preparation. The battle for Krasnogorovka is about to be finished, and now the Russians are trying to complete the battle, not just for the city itself, but uh, for the farms and the buildings, constructions around, because these fields are also under Ukraine control, and the Russians are planning to begin battle for these territory also very soon. Now let's talk about southwest northwestern direction. We have additional flags in this area. First of all, according to information we have, uh, the Ukrainians published the video of how they were FPV droning the Russians exactly in this building. Based on this video and based on the different mappers update, we have adjusted the map as well and we added this territory additionally to the territory of Russian control. According to different mappers, the Russians managed to move even further. The Deep State map confirms that the Russians in the most northwestern part control everything until Nahimova Street and according to uh, neutral mappers like Syriac the Russians control everything not just not just in the western part along Nahimova but the entire Nahimova Street and everything that is located below the street is under complete Russian control and the most important the Russians are getting closer and closer to the village to the intersection of the Nabirezhne Street and the bridge that goes to the north northern part of the village. So summarizing everything, the Russians are moving like this, trying to cut and to get as close as possible to the main supply roads. Of course, the Russians will try to create a cauldron or something like operational encirclement, but most likely they will not be able to do this because the Ukrainians have withdrawn the most dangerous positions towards the most northwestern part to have time and possibilities to evacuate as soon as possible. Now let's move further and let's talk about the most interesting uh, direction uh, currently this is Pakrovsk direction so as you can see we have some confirmed changes on the ground as well as some unconfirmed changes let's begin from confirmed changes first of all this is the fields that located to the west uh, to the southwest of Lozovatska we have colored this territory and most of the mappers who follows according to geolocations also have covered this territory. In this video we can see the clashes between Russian forces and the Ukrainian 151st mechanized brigade. Uh, exactly for these fields most likely we can see the scenes of how the Ukrainians were trying to uh, send uh, uh, some reinforcements, some soldiers uh, to unblock the Ukrainians who got encircled in these fields and when these 
video we can see the Ukrainian tank who was doing the same trying to unblock the Ukrainians who were uh, got into cauldron and how they were trying to create a safe road so both videos confirms that there were used to be very heavy clashes but from now on these territories in the complete Russian control as for additional progress we haven't received anything during the previous 24 hours I'll remind you that during the previous days the Russians were moving in the western direction towards Lysitsia and Ivanovka as for the previous night the previous 24 hours we haven't received any updates confirming additional progress exactly in this direction now let's move to Zhilanna direction we have lots of very interesting updates first of all according to different mappers according to pro-ukrainian mappers the Russians as a result of clashes during the previous 24 hours managed to secure the area completely on the Russian side of Vovchi river so all these fields everything was captured by the Russians including Yevgenievka so this part of Yevgenievka was captured by the Russians as well most likely today the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation will confirm this information and we will change the color of this territory in the red now let's talk about the air situation to the west of Vovcha as you can see there are also significant progress of armed forces of Russian Federation according to information we have the Russians secured these tree line that uh, lays right in front of uh, the village of Zhilanne this one so this uh, tree line was secured by the Russians so the Russians are trying to prepare a foothold for further offensive operation we will discuss this in a minute and according to uh, the um, Ukrainian mappers the Russians managed to improve their positions further along the railways and according to information we have, the Russians managed to improve their positions uh, in exactly already in the territory of the village of Visola. So what the Russians are planning to do next according to these geolocations? I believe that uh, the first thing that the Russians are going to do due to control over progress, due to control over the railways, it's like the flank secured and due to control over this part of Evgenievka, most likely that during the next uh, few days uh, the Russians will try to move further in the southern direction with the purpose to capture these three lines and these fortifications this will allow the russians to get uh, using the broad front line attack as close as possible to Zhilanna itself and from this perspective it is going to be very easy for the russians to force the ukrainians to fall back uh, from this uh, company stronghold this one to Zhilanna itself and then the russians in Novoselovka Persia will be able to cross Vovchi river and to continue moving Moving further in the western direction so this is something what the Russians are planning to do most likely during the next few days and obviously the village of Zhilanna is the primary target for the Russians for the next few days also we have adjusted the map as you can see we have colored this territory along the railways uh, these uh, changes were made based on this video that was published by the Ukrainian sources and this video that doesn't work right now uh, we can we might see if you have access to map you will be able to see the Russian Russian abandoned uh, personal carrier or armored vehicle that was under attack of armored forces of Ukraine. Oh, this is it, it works. So, this is the abandoned Russian tank. Uh, he was abandoned along the railways and the Ukrainians were attacking the tank with FPV drone. This video confirms that uh, the Russians managed to reach this line. When they reached this territory, they abandoned their vehicle and the tank took position along the railways. So the armored vehicle of uh, Russian forces was destroyed, but uh, it means, first of all, additional progress. Uh, now let's move further. Let's talk about uh, Taretsk New York agglomeration. As for New York itself, uh, we haven't received any updates during the previous night, but we have changed the color. Additional, we have added additional color, red color to the map uh, in uh, Zalizne area. The uh, Ukrainian sources published the video of how they were FPV droning the Russians. Uh, with uh, and uh, in this video we can see this video was already discussed yesterday but this video was wrongly geolocated according to the previous version the Russians the Ukrainians were FPV droning the Russians in this building but uh, today we got more evidence uh, we got uh, better geolocation and the building with the Russian flag was discovered here so based on this video most of the mappers have also adjusted their maps and shown additional progress of the Russians towards the P Pioneer of Avenue and and uh, based on this, we can make a conclusion that the battle for the college, for Tariyat's college, is about to begin. And this is going to be the end of at least the first stage of battle for Tariyat's New York agglomeration. 
now let's move further and let's talk about uh, coupons direction because as for these territories we have just regular updates and just uh, regular artillery strikes and nothing more we have we continue receiving significant updates uh, from southern coupons direction the russians continue bombing and attacking the city of liman and this is probably third or fourth or fifth explosion very heavy explosion in their own just exactly from this territory let's increase the numbers of this since the beginning of week few iskander strikes took place in the no northwestern part of this uh, small city as you can see a very heavy explosion under the temporary position of armored force of ukraine was destroyed a lot of strikes took place exactly in the southeastern part so the russian ukrainians concentrated their forces here this is something like logistic hub for forces before moving further in the eastern direction and uh, as you can see there are a lot of uh, icons exactly in the south and coupons let's talk first of all about changes on map the um, russian sources published the video of how they were fpv droning or lancetting the Ukrainian positions in this part of Crimea forest. This video confirms that the Russian Ukrainians uh, maybe controlled this territory before, but maybe they just managed to improve their positions. So we have changed the color of this territory based on this video. On the other hand, the different uh, pro-Ukrainian mappers adjusted their maps in Russian favor along these forests to the west of Dibrova. So, like as you can see, the Russians and the Ukrainians are moving towards each other, and as we can see, the uh, um, activity the Russians and the Ukrainians intensify their activity and the main, the major battle for this direction is about to begin. The Russians, uh, uh, it's very important for the Russians to take under control the, over this territory and to return control over Liman before moving further in direction of Slavyansk Kramatorsk. The same story as you can see, we can see it towards uh, the village of Nevsk and towards Jiribets River. Uh, during the previous 24 hours, lots of scenes, lots of fab strikes were published by the Russians, which conf confirms additional artillery preparation. Now let's move to the northern coupons direction. We have very interesting updates. So during the previous days, if you remember, the Russians were moving towards Askol River through Pishana to the west, and we we discussed that the let's say edge and the first Russian diverse and reconnaissance group managed to reach the Askol River itself. But and we were expecting that the Russians would continue moving exactly in this direction, but the Russians decided to be very careful. They decided before moving further to the west to clear the territory to the north and the Russians according to different mappers pro-Ukrainian, pro-Russian and neutral mappers managed to establish complete control over this stronghold and to secure this fortification area to the north of Pishana. Based on this video, based on these updates, if this information is correct, we can make a conclusion that most likely the Russians will try to, try to attack the Ukrainian positions to the west of Tabayevka, to the west of N26 road from the north, from the northeast, and the Russians will try to attack uh, let's say in the same direction but already from the northwest so they will try to force the Ukrainians to evacuate to withdraw their positions from this small cauldron and most likely this is going to happen during the next few weeks this is very important positions and the Russians will be able to maintain the line of combat contact to shorten it and to get as close as possible to Kupinsk agglomeration from the east as well as for Volchansk direction during the previous 24 hours we haven't received anything special or anything important just the regular artillery and aviation activity from the russian side the russians were bombing the ukrainian forces ukrainian positions the concentration of the forces in the eastern part of ovchansk a few more explosions took place in the Lipci and in Slabazhansk itself additional fab strikes and so on and uh, as for this direction we see that the front line uh, become became um, has become um, static completely neither the russians nor the ukrainians have the possibilities of forces to continue offensive operation or counter offensive operation and most likely this situation is going to take place for another few days until 
either the Russians or the Ukrainians finish the regrouping and then the, we will see everything from the beginning. Now let's talk about additional important updates about the situation in Ukraine and about the situation in the territory of the special military operation. According to information we have, uh, the Russians are sending more and more reinforcements and reserves to the line of combat contact. In this video we might see a very big batch of Russian T-90 tanks heading to the line of combat contact. As for uh, Russia itself, additional updates is coming about uh, the military purges to Today, another uh, deputy uh, minister of defense of Russian Federation was captured by the Russian special services. So probably he was also corrupted. And as you can see, it's already seventh or eighth or ninth general uh, from the minister of defense that was captured for the previous few months. Very important uh, report we received from the Russian bank, the main bank. According to information we have, Russia, Russia's main bank raised the key rate to 18%. This is very important because uh, the Russians are trying to stop the inflation. And the reason of inflation is the very high expenses of Russian Federation on the special military operation. According to information we have, the Russians have around 700,000 people already in the territory of the special military operation and they're getting very high salaries. And according to this report of the rising of the key rate means that the Russians are printing the money. They're printing a lot of money to pay such a high salaries and according to information we have the russians are planning to increase their army in the future as well so there are a few uh, ways for Russia to uh, slow down the inflation. First of all, to sell oil, to sell gas, to receive money for this. And if they don't have these possibilities, they need to print money. And according to this post, most likely the Russians uh, have just one possibility to print the money. This is a very bit bad piece of news because the inflation will just rising. And to slow down the inflation, the Russians will be forced to continue raising the K rate. And the raising of a K rate will make make a very uh, life for Russians yeah, very very expensive so we'll see of course what is going to be next but this is a very very warning bell that came from Russia but that means that the Russian economy doesn't have possibilities to uh, handle with all these problems they're facing right now maybe the sanctions began working who knows and that's it for the short video military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon and have a good day. Bye-bye.